Polygonal meshes in Softimage XSI consist of three basic component types for polygon meshes. Vertexes, or points, uh, two points then define an edge, which we can select here, and then several edges define then a polygon. Now in terms of actual functionality, it does not matter whether this is a polygon mesh or a subdivision surface, it's exactly the same selection tools, exactly the same um, feedback that you get there, and you can select uh, the polygon mesh or the subdivision surface, and if you switch back between the fourth, they will remain selected. So not only do we have our basic selection types and tools that work across the polygons, but we also have a couple separate ones. So for example, if I uh, delete a little hole up at the top, you'll see that I now have these turquoise edges around here. And basically what that is, is that's a border edge, defining that this is going to be uh, similar to a hard edge. It's going to retain the shape, um, even if there was a subdivision surface on it. If I want to select that directly, I have a special filter for that. So I can just simply go across here and select it. Another one that's uh, quite useful is Polygon Island sounds a little bit like a 70s TV show. And basically what that does is it selects a whole group of isolated polygons if they're together, but isolated from the rest, they'll be selected as such. For example, now I've selected all but that and all but that. There we go. And of course, then we have, can select all of your creased edges, um, <clears throat> maybe just triangles, just quads, just n-gons, any of those sorts of things. Also, we could select the samples for purposes of texturing um, with each of the bicubics here, just like that. Okay, so as far as that goes, let's just delete off that wonderful hole in my hat. One of the big imp important things for um, working with components is that you can group them together into so-called clusters. So for example, if I wish to apply a um, maybe a local attribute to a bunch of uh, polygons, um, or points or edges, doesn't really matter, but in this case I'm just going to take maybe like a ring and I'm going to put a different color on this ring up here. So what I can do is I can go down here, define them as cluster, or I can simply just apply a local uh, attribute or apply an attribute to a local selection and it will automatically define a cluster. Well, we'll just, for purposes of clarity, make this into a cluster. You'll find it if I select the object under clusters here, grouped polygons, and it will show you in a white selection exactly which that is. Also, if you go under the Explorer, you'll find under the polygon mesh, there is a group clusters, which contains all of your uh, clus component clusters in there. So <clears throat> if I now select that cluster and put on maybe like a local material, I don't know, let's make a little pink band around the hat. There we are. And you'll see that it's now applied that locally to those clusters, overriding the default uh, of the object. Okay, if I wish to get rid of that, I can simply grab that and delete it. I can also just as easily have clusters for edges or clusters for uh, maybe points. For example, if I'm going to add a crease uh, to a an object for a subdivision surface, let's just grab, for example, this one here, and maybe just sort of bring that around. And I wish to now make that a cluster and add a crease value to that cluster. You can see that it's now very easy to select it, deselect it, go in and modify it at a later point. Okay, so if I go into my clusters, I have the edge cluster right there. And again, to get rid of it, simply select it and delete it. It's also possible to create clusters with um, a center, which means then you can be animating these, you can use them um, to translate. So just create, sorry, create cluster with center, which then can be moved up and down maybe to create a little bulge up there. Now clusters are also very, very useful to be used in shape animation or for texturing or for many other things, but just the concept is uh, quite important that it's understood. So with clusters, one of the big problems that you'll have is that if I make a cluster here and now I make a cluster like this, you'll find that there's an overlap of clusters and often you'll be starting to put different attributes on them and it's very hard to keep track of which is which. And especially if you're assigning different materials to these clusters, what's going to happen? XSI will automatically keep track for you if you're going to be assigning materials uh, that overlap. So for example, let's put a Lambert on this one, and let's grab one across like this and put a different material on this, maybe a Strauss. And what it does is it automatically knows is that some local property is going to be overridden by two clusters. What are you going to do about it? And then you can simply decide here what's going to happen, and it will then choose for you. There you go. So now we've put a little sort of silver thing on my hat, which looks pretty ugly, so I'm just going to delete that off. 
So we simply grab in there and we can grab our clusters and just delete them off. Or what we can also do is we could go into our explorer and just select all clusters and delete them.